Hello and welcome to a new season of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. Lily. Cynthia. Charlie. And Josh. Lily, Charlie, welcome back to the show. Thank you uh, very much. Cynthia, yeah. welcome to our panel. Thanks it is so much. great to have you here. It's uh, great to be here. Cynthia is uh, one of uh, America's favorite <laughs> substitute teachers. Yes. And, and I'm now a substitute teacher, and I, we go back. We go back. Oh, yeah. Time. We have some history. I have my substitute license. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I'm an art major. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just standard English. <laughs> what are we going over today, Lainey? Today we'll be discussing captivity and restoration of Mrs. Mary Rawlinson Ooh, by Mary okay. Rawlinson. Alrighty, that was uh, something I was introduced to in the American literature class. Where I was with this guy right here. Actually, when I learned that, I was with uh, Lily. I was yep. in it too. Yeah, you were in it too. Uh, Dr. Borden. Hmm. Okay. I mean, it's all even the curve. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I, I did take uh, American literature with you as well. I, was I did one with you, and I did two with you. Yeah. Remember the time I fell down the... Oh, never mind. That's a lot of reading and a lot of papers. <laughs> Yes, indeed. What is our first question today? How are Indians portrayed in this work? Savages. Barbaric. Barbaric. Yeah. Beasts. Well, they're brutal and they're warlike, but it is something of reverse imperialism. They're resisting being occupied. And it's interesting, as a Puritan, someone who believed that everything was part of a higher divine plan, with whose court is God in, then? Because the natives went out. The way that the, uh, the Puritans functioned was they were workaholics. It was six days a week. You, you grind, uh, just complete your job, and then on the seventh day, you, you, rest you, worship. you go to church, and your priest yells at you. And he's faced back, uh, behind. Yes. He's, he's looking to uh, the altar, and he's screaming at people to do better, which is evident in uh, Wigglesworth's uh, Judgment Day. But back to this, uh, with regard to the way that they were viewed in the eyes of the writer was in a savage-like state, but which is, King Philip was a very, as he was called, he had another name. Uh, he, uh, he was vicious with regard to his mission to fight off the colonists, because you, you got to remember that it is very, uh, it's a very contradictory uh, piece of history that uh, we're touching upon when it comes to uh, how uh, the colonists write about the Native Americans and what really happened. Right. Just take a look at uh, most Westerns up until 1970. Sure. Think about the first Thanksgiving. And everything's wonderful. The Indians were helping out the colonists, teaching them how to plant. You remember in school, they put the fish in the ground and then the mm -hmm. corn. And uh, the relations were great. More and more colonists came in, settled there. They took over the land. The Indians were pushed out, pushed back. It's no wonder that the Indians started to get hungry, get frustrated. They couldn't fish on Saturday or Sunday on Sunday because it was the Sabbath. It was like, oh, well have to chafe under their rules. Another strategy, or if you want to call it that, that uh, Mary Rowlandson does, uh, engages in, is the fact that these uh, Indians, uh, they, the people that they shoot, they're more, they're women and children. They, she specifies how they yeah, go after that. Yeah, quote unquote helpless. Which, that makes, mm. that, makes them look more vicious than they actually are, concentrating on the fact that her young daughter, who was the only one she was able to take with her into captivity, was killed, and was killed off. Which, it could, granted, uh, as, it, as the story progresses, uh, so does uh, her, uh, her views on the situation and how uh, they tend to but what was interesting for me was uh, the Puritans believed that God even shapes the lives of non-believers. So yeah. 
what's happening to these natives here? Whose camp is he in? Because he's making the Puritans suffer, and they're like, well, that's the plan. It's making the natives triumph at the expense of people, or at least that's how Rowanson is portraying it, and that's the plan, and then... But then, if they're the faithful, shouldn't he want to redeem them in the end? And where's that, where does it all fit? Yeah, it seems like Mary never really identified with the Indians. She talks a lot about them and their culture, but it's either God is favoring her, or God is amazingly favoring the, the Native Americans so right. they can exist, even though they don't seem to have any food and they're on the run. So she thinks, well, he's favoring them now. And, uh, yeah, and it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. It happens time and again. <laughs> that is true, unfortunately. Our uh, next question. What role does Robinson's belief in God's play in this work? Plays every role in this work. I think there was a, well, I, I know there was a, a, a small passage saying, and I'm quoting it loosely, I apologize, but it was... Is this the same line I was going to take? Uh, he wounded me with one hand. And he yeah. healed me with the other. So yeah. he was, a, he was, and in, 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 um, her, in her eyes, she's being punished, but she's also being uh, rewarded at the same time with, with um, food or, you know, back then uh, there was no texting like, send help, LOL, I'm dying, LOL, send oh. my child some, you know, it was just, oh. you know, food or clothing. Well, this idea of redemption through penance runs all through Christianity. You yeah. have uh, John the Baptist loses his head. Yeah. I think the one that I most saw parallel to was uh, Daniel in the lion's den. Yes. The fact mm -hmm. that she uh, she continued to pray to her God, and King Philip was almost seen as if he was a savior to his people, and in she ended up getting captured uh, in exchange to that, but she was able to uh, reason with the Indians, and they were able to provide her with uh, specific uh, privileges in exchange for she she would have to. Uh, engage in tasks to yeah. benefit them. I think she had to make a pair of socks one night. She had to make, she was, uh, they would ask her to do things, and in return, uh, she would get uh, food. In, later on, they let her see her daughter as well. Yes. So, something I had noticed was, if we're talking about the role of religion, I was comparing it to something we're going to talk about in a later episode. I think The Stranger is that later or Yeah, earlier? it should be coming up later. Okay. <laughs> then when we do The Stranger, it's the same sort of idea. They almost parallel each other because you have existentialism where there's free will standing in for an absent divine or metaphysical force. And then there's Rollinson with metaphysics standing in for the absence of human agency. You have to rely on this being God's path or whatever because there's a complete lack of yeah. self-direction. I agree, they're both off. I think it is very uh, contrasting uh, because uh, uh, Mersal was, did, had no, uh, he, he did not believe in any kind of uh, divine being. Uh, Rollinson was a complete devout uh, believer in God and God's will. Well, I think if you push existentialism to its end, you start to believe that self is divine, that the idea of human agency is divine, that you don't need some metaphysical shape or pulling your strings. But this sort of idea, you get in both works, there's that idea of captivity. Marceau fears jail when he kills the Arab. Mm. And you have, in Camus' history, his father used to take him to witness executions, and that made him very against mm. capital punishment. Mm. With, on the other hand, with the Rollinson, she was, she was hoping that they just took her right then and there, but then she saw how uh, glittering the weapons that the uh, tribes uh, possessed, uh, when she saw them, it made her change her mind, and she said that uh, going through this, uh, any of that must be better than 
being uh, taken by that. Right. Right. Just an idea of imprisonment, you know, enforced captivity. She is a prisoner of war. Marceau is sort of a prisoner of inner conflict. There's inner war and there's outer war. Ooh. Yeah. Alrighty. The next question. Does Rollins, wow. does Rollinson view this experience in a positive or negative light? I think it was kind of both. She definitely viewed it as positive because she says, oh, I feel the love, of course, you know, paraphrasing loosely, very loosely. I feel redeemed, I am now worthy or something. I think when all is said okay. and done, when uh, she looks back on it, it was... A necessary experience necessary, because yeah. that she was what God wanted. She was being purged, out of her. purged for her sins, or um, instead of go, you know, instead of going to purgatory, uh, going straight to hell, you go to purgatory. Do you know who she reminds me of? Who's that? And this figure is a satirical figure, and the whole point of the book is to bash optimism. Have you ever read Candide, Voltaire? Sure. Oh, I like Candide. Yeah. Yeah. I like when Candide. Pangloss. Uh, meets up with Candide again, and he's lost all his teeth because he has the clap, but he has a story, and he was like, if I didn't get the clap, this wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't have been on the sailing ship, and I hadn't been on the sailing ship, this wouldn't have happened, and yeah, all my hair fell out, but if I hadn't lost all my hair, I wouldn't have known this. So this really is the best of all possible, possible worlds. worlds. <laughs> and then, obviously, you have to... The whole, Voltaire's whole point is that's a bunch of crap, but <laughs> suffering just means your life blows. Voltaire was a, a philosopher that he was known to question these kind of things. Uh, Rowlandson was a Puritan, a, Pur a Puritan, uh, no question, citizen. Yeah. So, and Puritans were the complete. They they feared of uh, being punished if that were granted. They believed in these things, mm -hmm. but at the same time. You didn't believe in God as your divine uh, uh, you're going, ruler. You're going down on your then way instead of up. You would, you'd right. be, you would get smited. It's my way or the highway. Pretty yeah. much. And they, but the Bible was both her guide and her pillow. Yes, I that it was. Mm. That is quite it's a little hard for a pillow. I think sometimes throw the Indian suit or something else. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it could also have been viewed negatively because she did stand up to them. Uh, I think I think twice, once or two, one or two times. Oh yeah, she did. She did but I don't. And, think... and then she got smacked around quite a bit, and, and then she was like, and then she just became humbled herself and probably said to herself, "This is something I need to go through. It's just another roadblock in my life." You know, in twenty first century terms, I gotta get through this. At the end, I think you got to look at it in the long run. Oh, yeah. And I think in the long run, it was a beneficial. Well, the Christian self, the idea of the Christian figure has to suffer to attain redemption, or even throughout religion, there's the idea of suffering as in, as bringing enlightenment. That transcends almost it's all faiths. That's yes. what it is. And the, there are some sects of the Christian religion that believe in purgatory, which is the step between uh, heaven and life in itself. Uh, as uh, Dante put it, it was uh, inferno was hell, uh, purgatory was purgatory, and paradiso was paradiso. Wait, I'll have another question. When he's with, when he's with Beatrice, and they, mm -hmm. thing. Oh. <coughs> What? Does yeah. anybody have any final thoughts about Mary Rowlandson? She was a real trooper. Mm -hmm. We could go on the wild food trail about all the things that the poor Indians had to forage out of the frozen ground when they were on the run. It's fascinating. Artichokes aren't the artichokes we eat today. They were sunflowers, um, and they had a nice crispy uh, like potato-like root that you could make things out of. And uh, Turtleberries were really huckleberries, mm -hmm. and the ground nuts, a long vine with walnut sized tubers that could be ground, made into flour, potatoes. Mm -hmm. And then there's, I'll never use the word foodies again, but there was some actually good meals that were cooked out mm -hmm. in the wild out of natural plants and creatures. It's all healthy too. That is, uh, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the way that the uh, Indian tribes uh, 
cooked, if they killed any animal product, they would have a ritual before they yeah. consumed it. Yeah. Thanking it for its life, its uh, it's uh, for doing yes. its duty in nourishing them. We learned a lot about Indian culture and traditions mm. in her story that were that and and the Europeans and colonists were learning too. That's what meant the fact that this interaction is uh, taking place is a positive, but unfortunately, it was not enough for some kind of unity to yeah. occur, and it only uh, became uh, worse. Because it wasn't motivated by any sort of quest for common advancement. It was, let's attain this land, we bought this land, settle it. That's the way, the, the, the colonist way of thinking is trying to obtain as much land as they possibly can, and the Indian tribes believe the land is for everyone. Well, if you think of the English coat of arms, mon dieu et mon tala, my God and my right, like their God-given right to move in, mm -hmm. settle in, have the people who live there be, become members of their religion, or else, or else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> When the Indians, quote unquote, sold Manhattan to the colonists for the 20 beads, they didn't even believe it was for sale. They thought they were cheating us. They were like, ha ha, the settlers think they bought it. Don't they realize nobody owns land? <laughs> That's a naturalist kind of way of looking at things, which it's very the uh, idea that uh, human thought is so uh, narrow that... Uh, constricted, right? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. very constricted. The way that uh, humans only think in a way that uh, the world centers for their needs, when in the, natural, uh, the naturalist uh, way of thinking is that it just is, and that every it sees every species in the same way. Yeah, the world accommodates everything. And that the death of a human is just as... Uh, it has the same kind of uh, sacredness as the death of a grasshopper. It's true. Oh, wow. Ready, if you are interested in finding uh, the uh, captivity and restoration of Mrs. Mary Rowlandson, uh, the... Uh, I read it in Volume A of the Norton Anthology of American Literature. I did too. If that's a little bit too much for you, you could probably find alternate outlets. It's only a 30-page uh, piece, so you would probably it would probably be in another collection, maybe less pricey than uh, Norton uh, Anthology, but you could probably most of you find it online. If it's before 1923, <laughs> it should be public domain, but it also depends and on... And you can also get a, get a library, not pay a cent, unless it's overdue, because you like the book so much. That's what renewals are for. Exactly. And if anyone's interested in other captivity novels, there's an excellent one um, by a woman, Mrs. Mary Jamison, and it's an entirely different story from Mrs. Mm -hmm. Mary Rowlandson's. Mm -hmm. And hmm. who is she? Who had captured her? Um, it was Indians, I forget what tribe, possibly Seneca's, when she was 12. All her family mm -hmm. had been killed, um, but she actually wound up falling in love with her husband, who she married, something that was truly shocking in those times. Mm -hmm. It's about 40 years, I think, after Rowlandson's captivity. But a true story, so. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'll definitely have to check mm -hmm. that out. Mm -hmm. Ready? Be sure to join us next time for another episode of Literary Gladiators. Till then, keep reading.